Excuse me, everyone. We're going to get started. Thank you. I ask that you please uh, stand and join us in a salute to the flag. After, after we do the salute, we would like to just have a moment of silence for three individuals who passed away this month. Retired firefighter Gregory Snell, who's a member of the Maplewood Fire Department, who uh, passed away on December 6th. Uh, Sharon Duberman Garrity, the co-founder of Swap Soma and Soma Lounge. She's an active volunteer who died December 15th. And F. Scott Clawson, the owner of Scott's Deli, who died on December 16th. We'll do the uh, salute to a flag, and then we'll ask you to just remain standing for a moment of silence. Moment of silence for Greg, Sharon, and Scott. Thank you very much. Pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231, Public Laws, 1975, this is to state for the record that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public by posting and maintaining the annual notice of regular meetings on the bulletin board of the municipal building 
By mailing the annual notice of regular meetings for 2017 to the news record and Star Ledger in December 2016, and by filing said notice in the office of the township clerk. Ms. Adams? Here. Mr. Larrier? Here. Mr. Lambrick? Here. Mr. McGeehee? Here. Mayor DeLuca? Here. <clears throat> Whereas Chapter 231 Public Laws of 1975, commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act, requires that all means of public bodies be open to the public, and where Section 7 provides that the governing body has the discretion to permit, prohibit, or regulate the active participation of the public in any meeting, and whereas the desire of this governing body to comply with the provision of this Act, same time to conduct its business in an orderly and expeditious manner, now therefore be resolved by the Township Committee, Township Maplewood does hereby prohibit, except to set forth in the formal agenda, active participation and deliberation to the governing body by the public, and except as otherwise described by law, does limit the public to the observation of the actions and discussion of the governing body at all of its regular and special meetings. So moved. Second. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Lambrick? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Thank you. Welcome to the December 19th, 2017 meeting of the Maplewood Township Committee. I'm going to run through the agenda real quick. We're going to start off with public comment, if anyone has a comment on, the, on an agenda item. Uh, next, we're going to have uh, a statement from Deputy Mayor uh, Nancy Adams. And then we're going to get into what most of you are here for, and that is the uh, promotions of um, four members of the Maplewood Police Department. Uh, we'll be doing them separately and then swearing them in. After that, if you want to stick around, we have a riveting uh, meeting uh, for you. Um, we will probably take a few minute break so that you can exit. I understand there's a party. No party. We just, just to state for the record, we were not invited. Yeah. But uh, we know it's happening. Do we know uh, where? We know where. And we know where. where? Yes, at the Woodland. Uh, so. Um, Great. After after we do the swearing in, we'll take a few minutes uh, so that you can clear out and get to the party, and then we'll go on. We're going to have our community development block grant hearing. Uh, then we'll consider an ordinance on final reading dealing with garages. We have two discussion items um, that we'll deal with. We have our consent agenda. We are going to pull off one item on the consent agenda and vote for that separately, and that has to do with the elevator at the Woodland, the contract for the elevator. We'll, uh, and the other matters on the consent agenda are um, contracts, uh, transferring funds, um, minutes of meetings, renewing uh, or rescinding a renewal of an alcoholic beverage uh, license, um, and approving bills and claims. We then will have a second public comment period. We'll have reports from our administration, uh, administrative members, reports from elected officials, and then we will adjourn. Uh, after the meeting is over, we will have our caucus, which will there'll be a little break, and we'll have our caucus. I did want to mention before I turn the mic over to uh, Ms. Adams that this is uh, uh, Township Committee woman in the Larrier's last meeting. And since we have so many people here, would you join me in giving her a, a round of applause? If you really want some fun, at towards the end of the meeting, we're going to be saying a few things about her. So. Uh, <laughs> We'll get to that. So uh, with that, I'm going to ask uh, Deputy Mayor Adams to uh, make her comments. Thank you, Mayor. Breastcancer.org uh, states that about one in eight US women, about 12%, will develop inv invasive breast cancer over the course of her lifetime. I am now one of the 12%. But women aren't alone in this epidemic. About 2,470 new cases of invasive breast cancer are expected to be diagnosed in men in 2017. A man's lifetime risk of breast cancer is about one in a thousand. So in mid-September, I was diagnosed with zero stage DCIS breast cancer. Zero stage, meaning very, very early in growth. 
cancer was found during a routine mammogram and subsequent ultrasound. Left untreated, this DCS could have quickly become invasive cancer. I, though, am extremely lucky, but it takes more than luck to save lives. It requires monthly self-breast exam and annual mammograms. And even though there was a lot of cancer, and particularly breast cancer, in my mother's side of my family, I skipped a couple of years of my routine mammogram. Why? I suppose, like most people, I'm busy. It's tough to fit in a routine test. But I knew, I knew that a woman's risk of breast cancer nearly doubles if she has first-degree relative diagnosed with breast cancer. And I have that. Why, why, I wondered now, did I become lax about my own routine medical care. So then I remembered, because obviously I've had time to think about it, I remembered a couple years ago when the recommendation for yearly mammograms by the CDC changed. It changed to, quote, the United States Preventative Services Task Force recommends that average risk women who are 50 to 74 years old should have a screening mammogram every two years. Average risk risk women who are 40 to 49 years old should talk to their doctor about when to start and how often to get their screening mammograms. So this position conflicted with a couple of decades of recommendations that urged women to get annual mammograms after the age of 40. These reports about mammograms even went so far as to say there are more reasons to not get annual mammograms than reasons to get them. So after years of emphasizing to women the importance of annual mammograms and of early detection, the experts were sending women conflicting messages. This is the kind of thing that makes even those of us who are smart enough to know better to relax a little, postpone that annoying and awful pain, often painful test. It's just routine, it can wait, postpone it a few months, a few months more. So after I endured a couple months of tests, biopsies, more tests, scans, MRIs, genetic testing, doctor's visits, on December 4th, I had extensive breast and reconstructive surgery. I am privileged to have medical insurance to help me pay for these procedures. Many people do not, and soon more and more people will not be covered by insurance. After an eight and a half hour surgery and five days in the hospital, I returned home and I'm getting better. I'm getting better every day, I want to assure you. And while I have several more months of recovery and healing ahead of me, my doctors expect a full recovery. So as your township committee member in our collective home of Maplewood, I share with you our privileges of life in our great township and I share with you our challenges. Healthcare is one of those challenges. I urge all of our residents, men and women alike, to be vigilant and proactive about your well-being. Challenge your insurance companies to cover your mammograms annually and to cover all other preventative tests that will help protect your health. Challenge your representatives up here and on the state and federal level to protect your health, all of our health. Close to 41,000 women in the United States are expected to die in 2017 from breast cancer. The year is almost over and luckily I won't be one of them. <laughs> cancer is often curable and doesn't have to be a death sentence. Breast cancer is 80% curable, 80%. Guess what? When it's caught early, 80% curable. That's a hell of a good percentage. So I'm grateful to all my friends, old and new, families, coworkers, Maplewoodians, those ex-Maplewoodians far away who've even sent me a meal tonight. They've sent flowers, meals, cards, texts, phone calls, prayers, and good thoughts. I know all of it helped a lot. And while I'm preaching, I would like to add that my doctors confirmed that my, the 20 years of daily walking for exercise in our beautiful, walkable town has helped enormously with my recovery, my ability to endure such a long surgery. 
So take advantage of our hilly town, our picturesque hometown, and stay to stay healthy. You don't need a gym membership. You don't need anything. Just get out and walk. Simply put, keep moving. And take care of yourself, and please get your preventative tests. That's all I have to say. Thank you for now. Thank you very much. So we're going to move on with the meeting, and we're going to invite anyone who would like to address the Township Committee on an agenda item. OK, I see no one. Next, we're going to, we do. OK, I'm sorry. Come on up. When I saw you turn that way, I thought you were leaving. All right. We're more than happy to have you come on up. In front of me, but I was advised that there is an agenda item pertaining to Mr. Rupert Calvin Bell. Yes. And he's been invited to appear before this committee in private. And he came to me and talked to me about some issues. And by the way, I'm sorry. I should introduce myself. Yes. I am so sorry. My name is Eldridge Hawkins Sr. I have spent my life in pursuing civil rights for everybody. I was one of the first half dozen lawyers, or I should say, in the EEOC in Washington, D.C. I say that because I'm about to speak to you briefly a perception that I've developed after reviewing some documents given to me by Mr. Bell. And I do not wish to encumber the record with things that might make the township look bad. So I'm going to make a suggestion. I would like to volunteer to make a to sit down with Maplewood, to look at certain situations that exist in Maplewood, and try to show and give my advice on how I think certain things can be repaired. To give you an understanding of what I'm talking about, Mr. Bell had been employed for some time with Maplewood. And he's been complaining for the last two years, put it bluntly, about race discrimination as it has been going on in his perception in Maplewood. He has shown me examples of that about which he's been complaining. And once I have analyzed these examples, I find that it is more than just one incident here, one incident there. It appears to be something that is rooted within the system that needs to be expunged from the system. So that, again, I don't wish to uh, defame this town when it may not be necessary. I do, however, suggest that what I have seen that has been given to me by Mr. Bell would require me as an attorney to go into certain litigation, which I do for a living, but it doesn't necessarily make me happy. I would prefer to see a system work rather than just tear it apart because I want to make some money for a client. I would prefer to volunteer, to sit down before you guys do something that will only require me to do something drastic. So I think I should stop having given you my suggestion and only tell you that if you do not accept my suggestion, I have to do what I have to do 
and I really don't think it should be necessary. So I would ask all of you, whatever you were going to discuss on the record for the first time in three years with my client, uh, that you may wish to consider what I'm saying, and possibly if you are not aware of that which has infested the whole system in this township, in my opinion, as I've seen it, maybe I can show you some things that maybe will open your eyes and maybe, just maybe, you might agree with me and we could solve a whole lot of problems, systemic and otherwise, with fewer blows being thrown. I, I'm just trying to throw the palm of the, the uh, peace branch out there. And, and I, I, I ask that you accept it and please don't do anything rash tonight with Mr. Bell. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else want to address the Township Committee? Okay. We're going to move on now to uh, the resolution that we have here. Ms. Fritzen, would you please read it? It's Mayor Resolution number 23317. It's a resolution appointing Lieutenant Albert Frederick Sally to Captain of the Maplewood Police Department. Whereas the position of captain in the Maplewood Police Department of the Township of Maplewood has become vacant, and whereas the Township Committee of the Township of Maplewood has conducted interviews to fill the position of captain in the Police Department, and where it has been determined that Lieutenant Albert Frederick Sally is qualified for the position, now therefore be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Maplewood, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that Lieutenant Albert Frederick Sally be and is hereby appointed to the position of captain in the Maplewood Police Department in the Township of Maplewood, effective December 19, 2017. Mr. Lindbergh, can we get a motion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it is uh, an honor and a pleasure to move that Lieutenant Sally uh, be promoted to the rank of captain of the Maplewood Police Department. Yes, I second that. Ms. Call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you.
What's it called? Words. <laughs> we can dance it to the short version. I don't want to bore you too long, so I'm just gonna. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out this evening. Um, I'd like to thank God. God is good. I am so thankful and, and, and appreciate the vote of confidence given to me for a position of captain in the Maplewood Police Department. It will be 17 years I've been with this department since January. I've committed my efforts to service to this community of Maplewood, and I will continue to do so. The last few years have been a transition period within the Maplewood Police Department. With the, super, with the promotions and the supervisors we have, I believe we are moving in the right direction. The department moving forward will continue to protect and serve the citizens of Maplewood and all persons that enter our community. We will, as a department, treat all with dignity, respect, and remain professional. As a department, we will improve our training and expertise with emphasis in cultural diversity and de-escalation training. We will continue our efforts in crime prevention, investigation, and apprehension of persons committing crime and focus on traffic safety. As a department, we will need and will improve our relationship with the public by becoming more accessible and transparent to gain the public trust. As a, as a department, we started the process by engaging in a few programs, such as the mentor program, clergy alliance, and we have other programs that we are planning to uh, implement. I would like to say that we have great women and men working in the Maple Police Department with more diversity than before. The women and men of this department are committed to approving the relationship between the police and the community. I would like to thank my family, my beautiful wife, Janine, my mother, Robina, my children. I also like to thank my father, Fred Sally. I also uh, like to thank uh, Mayor DeLuca, Township Committee, Township Administrator, uh, Mr. Manning, Town Clerk, Ms. Fritzen, Chief Jimmy Duvall, and I also like to thank the uh, local number 44 PBA and the SOA, and I'd like to thank the Woodland for the party. <laughs> <laughs> I would also like to thank all, all my family and friends, and congratulations to all who were promoted. Thank you. Ms. Fritzen, we have another resolution, 234-17. Yes, Mayor, we do. A resolution appointing Sergeant Thomas Patrick DiMaggio to Lieutenant of the Maplewood Police Department. Whereas the position of Lieutenant in the Maplewood Police Department, Township of Maplewood has become vacant. And whereas the Township Committee, the Township of Maplewood, has conducted interviews to fill the position of Lieutenant in the Police Department, and whereas it has been determined that Sergeant Thomas Patrick DiMaggio is qualified for the position, now therefore be resolved by the Township Committee, Township of Maplewood, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that Sergeant Thomas Patrick DiMaggio, being as hereby appointed to the position of Lieutenant in the Maplewood Police Department in the Township of Maplewood, effective December 19, 2017. Mr. Mayor, it is Again, my honor and my pleasure to move that we appoint Sergeant DiMaggio to the rank of Lieutenant in the Maplewood Police Department. I absolutely second that motion. Please call the roll. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Larrier. Yes. Mr. Lembrick. Yes. Mr. McGeehee. Yes. Mayor DeLuca. Yes. Congratulations.
solemnly swear, solemnly swear that I will, that I will support, the support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear faith and allegiance to the government established in this state, in the United States, and under the authority of the people. That I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of the office of Lieutenant in Maplewood Police Department, according to the test of my ability. Congratulations. <laughs> so I'm uh, a little less prepared than uh, Captain Sally did, but I'd like to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank the Township Committee, the Chief, everybody, all my coworkers, my family, my friends. Um, it's been an amazing uh, opportunity, and uh, I'm very blessed to be here. God is good. So thank you again. I'm personally inviting everybody to uh, <laughs> the 60 Women. <laughs> Uh, afterwards, a little celebration. So once again, thanks again for, for coming out, and um, I'm blessed to be here. Thank you. Ms. Fritzen, we have uh, Resolution 235-17. Yes, Mayor. Resolution appointing Sergeant Naima Najia Malloy to Lieutenant of the Maplewood Police Department. Whereas the position of Lieutenant in the Maplewood Police Department the Township of Maplewood has become vacant. Whereas the Township Committee, the Township of Maplewood has conducted interviews to fill the position of Lieutenant in the Police Department. And whereas it has been determined that Sergeant Nahima Najia Malloy is qualified for the position. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Township Committee, Township Maplewood County, Vestic State of New Jersey, that Sergeant Nahima Najia Malloy be is hereby appointed to the position of Lieutenant in the Maplewood Police Department in the Township of Maplewood, effective December 19, 2017. Mr. Mayor, it is again my honor and my pleasure to move that we appoint Sergeant Malloy to be in the position of Lieutenant of the Maplewood Police Department. Mayor, it's my pleasure to second that motion. Who's called the roll? Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Lambrick? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, congratulations. <laughs> that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the government established in this state and the United States, and under the authority of the people, and I will faithfully, impartially, just perform all the duties 
of the Office of Lieutenant in Maplewood Police Department, according to the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations, Lieutenant. <laughs> I would just like to thank everyone for coming. I like to keep the ball rolling. God is good. <laughs> um, I like to thank my husband for being my support system. I like to thank my son for not crying and being all of my. <laughs> I like to thank all of my family, my friends, my babysitting team that let me study, that let me just fight with this and baby and everything. Um, I like to thank everybody for coming out of the township committee, the chief, um, the local 44, the department. I like to just thank everybody, and I'm humbled and I am ready to serve. Thank you. Oh. Okay, uh, we have another resolution, 23617. Mayor, <clears throat> resolution appointing Sergeant Christopher Richard Black to Lieutenant of the Maplewood Police Department. Whereas the position of Lieutenant in the Maplewood Police Department of the Township of Maplewood has become vacant, and whereas the Township Committee of the Township of Maplewood has conducted interviews to fill the position of Lieutenant in the Police Department, and whereas it has been determined that Sergeant Christopher Richard Black is qualified for the position, now therefore be resolved by the Township Committee, the Township of Maywood County of Essex State of New Jersey, that Sergeant Christopher Richard Black, being as hereby appointed to the position of Lieutenant in the Maywood Police Department in the Township of Maywood, effective December 19th, 2017. Mr. Mayor, it is my honor and my pleasure to move that this committee approve the resolution appointing Sergeant Black to be in the position of Lieutenant of the Maplewood Police Department. Mr. Mayor, I am happy to second that motion. Please call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Lambrick? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, congratulations. Best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, 
So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Lieutenant. <laughs> I am the tallest, but I will be the shortest. <laughs> <laughs> just want to thank everybody, my family, the department, the township committee, for their support uh, throughout the years, and I look forward to serving everybody. Thank you. Oh. Let's have a party. So we are going to take that couple minute break and when you go to the woodland, please, <laughs> please don't make us call the cops on you. Uh, we, have, we, have a, we have a neighbor that's very sensitive to noise, so uh, keep the door shut and the party quiet. Inside. Have a good time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
started. Please ask if you'd like to uh, stick around for the meeting, that's fine. So this is our uh, second presentation in hearing. Can you get closer to the mic? Oh, I'm sorry, what? Closer to the mic. Oh, okay, sorry. So we are applying, the Township of Maplewood is applying to the Essex County uh, Office of uh, Community Development for various ADA compliant uh, solutions for different buildings, such as our municipal building, Dehart Community Center, Gordon Park uh, Crosswalks, uh, Dinell Road crossings, Hilton Library, Municipal Parking Lot, number nine, Police Building, Bergdorf Cultural Center, and DPW Building. So uh, the total cost we're asking for is $197,893. Uh, we've gone over all the lists. Are there any questions from the Township Committee? Any questions from the Township Committee? No. Any questions from the public? The public. Anyone would like to speak on this request, which is a request for $197,000 in community development block grant money for Americans with Disability Act improvements around town? Seeing no one will close. 
close the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Manning. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Adams, can we get her? I'm sorry, you need to, item number 15, can you read the resolution? There. What? By title. <laughs> resolution approving an application for funding from the 2018 Essex County Community Development Block Grant Program to make ADA improvements in township owned buildings and on public thoroughfares. Okay, we have a, uh, the resolutions by title has been read. Ms. Adams, can we get a motion? Mr. Chairman, I have moved to adopt this res the adoption of this resolution. I second it. Who's called the roll? Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Lambrick? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. 16, we have an ordinance on final passage. Mayor, ordinance number 2878-17, amend chapter 271 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood, entitled Zoning and Development Regulations. This ordinance will eliminate the requirement that a garage be built on all residential use properties. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this ordinance, which deals with uh, eliminating the requirement for that a garage be built on all residential use properties? Okay, seeing no one will close the public hearing. Uh, Mrs. Larry, do you want to uh, move it? I certainly would. Mr. Mayor, I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole, and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange news record, according to law. Second. Ms. Larry, do you want to give us some background on this? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, this uh, was brought to our attention that uh, the requirement to build, rebuild a garage on the site where one is torn down might be onerous for some residents, uh, especially in the instance where there might be uh, a garage that's dilapidated uh, and the owner cannot afford to rebuild it. So as a result of the requirement to rebuild it, often we have garages that are dilapidated in poor repair, um, maybe even a danger, just because the fear it was that if, we, if you take it down, you have to build it. So, this re removing this requirement, I think, will help our residents, those who might be in need of a, a torn down garage and don't either need or want another one or can't afford another one. It, get, it puts the, uh, the ability to make that decision on them. And I think this is uh, absolutely a step in the right direction. And I think it will help and some of whom I even know myself. Uh, Ms. Adams, we approved in September an ordinance to, to um, dealing with lot coverage Correct. and building coverage. How will that impact this ordinance? Mayor, I was going to bring that up. The, um, the fear of a couple of the township committee members when we brought this forward um, as a request of the zoning board chair um, was that there would be overbuilding on lots and um, substitution of garages for extra large additions to houses. Um, the ordinance we passed in September, um, which uh, tightened up our lot coverage ordinance and building coverage, I think if uh, Mr. Lumbrick and Mr. McGeehy um, would confirm that allayed their fears with regard to requiring a garage be built in, in its place. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with this decision based on what we did in September, where previously I was not. I think to Ms. Larrier's point, the financial burden that this carries on our residents is first and foremost. And uh, both the, uh, the lot coverage ordinance uh, and some, some other information that uh, Deputy Mayor Adams and, and others have been kind enough to, to gather and share with us uh, as yes, you know, it, it hasn't, I would say it hasn't alleviated all of my concerns, uh, but it has persuaded me that, that this is the better course of action. And uh, I thank uh, Deputy Mayor Adams and uh, the planning board and others who, who've put in the time 
uh, to take the steps necessary to make sure that, uh, that, that we can make this change uh, without having some of the, the unintended negative consequences that, that I otherwise had, had feared might result. So thank you. Okay, and just uh, for the record, we had a resident come at our last meeting raising some questions and concerns about uh, someone tearing down a garage and expanding their house, and we've just dealt with that as, as was talked about, but also the possibility of people parking in front of their homes, uh, which is still prohibited in um, 271.50, our ordinance. Parking spaces for residential uses uh, cannot be, be in the yard space between the public street and any principal dwelling. So that would uh, not allow that to happen. So um, so I think we're in good shape. Uh, if there's nothing else, we'll ask, uh, we have a motion and a second. We'll ask Ms. Fritzen to call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. We have two discussion items. The first dealing with the DPW director. Um, so just to put this into a uh, bigger picture, at the last meeting of the Township Committee, we approved the reappointments of a um, number of department uh, staff members, both uh, department directors and others um, for various positions. And January 1st is when we make the annual appointments uh, for those individuals. There were two individuals that we had requested to be able to talk in uh, closed session about, uh, and per state law, we have to notify them and ask them if they want to be, uh, if, we, if we can speak about them in closed, uh, and if not, uh, whether they want to um, have us have any discussion in open session. So we are having a discussion uh, about uh, the DPW, DPW director, Calvin Bell. Um, and I will just uh, start off the conversation by saying that um, we uh, have worked with Mr. Bell now for a number of years. Uh, over the years, we've had some uh, concerns about snow removal, um, some of the community interaction with uh, different events. And I believe that um, we need to continue to work on these items. And uh, what I had uh, suggested what I was going to suggest in close, if we um, work, if we were to uh, discuss him, but we weren't able to, that uh, in reappointing him on January 1st, that we develop a work plan with Mr. Bell so that we and he are satisfied about expectations for 2018 and beyond. Um, I think it's important that we address some of the concerns that we've all heard. Um, and I think that uh, we can work with Mr. Bell to uh, come up with an agreement. Um, hopefully we can do that prior to January 1st and uh, we'll be able to move forward with that appointment on January 1st. Mr. Mayor, I just like to add, uh, and I, I don't know whether you meant to include this or not, but for clarity, it would be important to me that uh, whether or not we can deal with it before January 1st, uh, given the holidays, I'd like to uh, explore more and, and hear about uh, some of the issues that were raised by uh, Council tonight uh, for, for Mr. Bell. Uh, without knowing the specifics of which uh, the gentleman spoke, uh, I'm certainly uh, troubled uh, by uh, some of the things that, that he he seemed to suggest, uh, and I think that's something that, that we need to look into. Uh, obviously, not necessarily uh, prior to reappointing Mr. Bell to his position on January 1, necessarily, but uh, I don't want that to get lost. Um, so if we're in agreement, we could, I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted to add, um, as um, Chair of Engineering Public Works, I work um, with Mr. Bell probably more closely than um, members who are not on that committee. Um, I'm pleased with the responsiveness of Mr. Bell when I reach out to him and his attention to matters that I raise with him. So my personal experience is a good one. 
Um, I have been privy to some of the issues within the Department of Public Works, um, but not being there firsthand, it's difficult to, to glean exactly what's going on um, through letters or, or statements or emails. Um, however, I, I, I would like to figure out a way to make that situation better. Um, and I think a clear, a clear um, expectation sheet, and one, one of the, um, the issues I find is um, the expectations not only of the governing body and the administration, but of the public, when you follow in the, heel, in the shoes of somebody who happened to enjoy being very engaged and very involved in the public, um, unless you're as engaged and as involved, it may look like you're not engaged or involved enough. And perhaps there is somewhere in between the two. Um, you, you know, it's like going from a type A personality to, and then, you know, so, so the perception um, may be that certain things aren't being taken care of and maybe some things are slipping through the cracks. So I would like to just tighten up those expectations and um, also uh, thank Mr. Bell for um, being responsive to, to me as, as a representative on the Township Committee and um, working with me on some of my issues with regard to trees and plantings and all things public works. So that's all I have right now. Okay. So um, we'll move forward. I would ask that uh, we begin the conversation. Um, Mr. Mann, if you could set that up to talk about how we're going to sure. um, discuss with Mr. Bell setting up a work plan. Okay. I, I would echo uh, Mr. Lombrick's, um comments about the issues that were brought forward this evening by Mr. Bell's uh, counsel. But I would also like to express my disappointment that this is uh, the first or the way we're hearing it, or at least the first or the way I'm hearing it. I would have liked to have had the opportunity to talk about this before I'm hearing about it, public comment from your counsel, sir. and I. Uh, I feel like perhaps, I believe maybe we should have been given that opportunity. Um, so I would just like to put that on for the record. I would like to agree with that. I, I, I was very concerned by the threatening tone of the communication that was disseminated this evening. Uh, and I'll leave my other comments regarding Mr. Bell uh, for a future. I know we've worked together personally uh, and I have been pleased. I've also heard from residents about proactiveness, honestly. Uh, but, you know, from my perspective, uh, working in a corporate environment, you know, we call that um, the ability to enhance and improve what we do from a day-to-day -day perspective. Um, and, I, and I think that's something that we want to do. We want to move forward in that capacity. I'm only speaking for myself and not for my colleagues. I would, have, I would concur, yes. Okay. So we will, uh, with the agreement, we'll move forward. Uh, Mr. Bell will be on the uh, appointment list on January 1st, and we'll get that. Um, no. uh, next up is a discussion item for the chief financial officer. This is the same situation. We had um, uh, advised the chief financial officer that we wanted to have a conversation about his employment, um, or his reappointment rather, uh, in closed. He opted uh, to have it discussed in open. Um, I have, uh, as chair of the finance committee, I've worked mostly with the chief financial officer uh, on matters, and we've all worked with him on budget matters. Uh, there is a uh, state law that um, after three years, it is the tenure or four years? Four years. At the anniversary of the fourth year, um, the chief financial officer would get tenure. Um, that will happen in July. And um, with the change in our township administrator, with Mr. Manning leaving, um, I thought it would be good to be uh, to spend the next six, seven months really uh, taking a deeper dive on the work of Mr. 
uh, Uribe um, and give the new administrator an opportunity to meet Mr. Uribe and, and figure out whether um, there's a good working relationship before we would vote to give him tenure. So what I would suggest with Mr. Uribe is that on January 1st, we appoint him through June 30th um, so that we can work on this and we don't, uh, if we, if, and then we don't threaten the, or not threaten, but if we don't tip into the tenure position. Because um, if we appoint him for the whole year, then he'll automatically get tenure on January, on July 1st. We've run this by our labor council. Yes. And this is uh, acceptable pro uh, procedure and practice. That's my understanding, right, Joseph? Yes. So that would be my recommendation that we have Mr. Uribe on the appointment list on January 1st through uh, the end of June. And... Um, Again, gives us time to, to work with him and also have him uh, interface with the new uh, administrator. That makes sense to me, Mr. Mayor. I would, I would second that to the extent a second is required. Any comments? The rating. Mr. Uribe get a chance to speak? No. Nope. It's not a hearing. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know that that I would necessarily or I, I I'm not I unfortunately I'm not sure I can put into words what my reservations are. Mostly, I think the only reason that I feel a little bit comfortable is because of the impending departure of Mr. Manning. But uh, overall, I, I don't know that I would agree with that course of action only because I... I, I don't know that I could agree. I, I would not agree with it. Well, the majority agrees, so we'll, well move forward. I know. Okay. And, and Mr. Mayor, just a point of uh, procedure. Given these appointments are going to happen January 1, would it be appropriate for us to seek any input from Mr. Dapis? Sure. I mean, if he has any yes. offer. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, those are our two discussion items. We're now on the consent agenda, but we are removing um, item number 10, which is resolution 245-17, which we'll vote on separately. We need a motion on the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I would like to move adoption of numbers 1 through 9 and 11 through 13 on the consent agenda. Second. Any comments? Mayor, I need to abstain from uh, numbers 12 and 13, as do I. Okay, please call the roll. Sams, yes. Larrier, uh, yes, up through 11. Mr. Lembrick, yes. Mr. McGee, yes. Mayor DeLuca, yes. We get a motion on uh, resolution 245-17, Ms. Adams. This is the uh, contract for the Woodland oh, right. Road elevator. My apologies. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move the adoption of this resolution based on the um, letter of recommendation from our attorney and administrator with regard to um, the uh, award to the Riefalo, Riefalo Construction Company. I'll second that. Mr. Desiderio, can you explain what we're doing? Yeah, Mayor, um, on occasion we get uh, bids that are so low and, and out of whack that it, it puts a red flag up. And that was what we had with ISG LLC with regard to this elevator uh, at the Woodland. Uh, the bid came in at $273,240. And our, engine, our uh, consultant's estimate was approximately $400,000. So we were very concerned about that, and uh, we had um, uh, the consultant, Mr. Gates, 
uh, do his due diligence and he was uh, unable to uh, find satisfactory work experience for this particular contractor. So based on that, uh, his opinion and my conversation with, uh, with Mr. Kittner, uh, it was our uh, combined recommendation uh, that because of the lack of experience and the fact that the bid amount is not in our opinion reasonable. And, and, and someone said, well, why would you care if the bid is lower? We want the job to be done correctly. And if the job is not going to be done correctly or not be done properly, then we're going to wind up in litigation. It's just going to create all kinds of problems. So based on that, we made a recommendation that the bid not be uh, given to ISG LLC. I suggested to Mr. Kidner that he give notice to them. Uh, he did do that, and we received an email back from them saying they weren't going to challenge it. Uh, there was another bidder who was uh, JG Drywall LLC. Uh, their bid, uh, if you take the combined amount, uh, would actually be slightly less. <clears throat> However, they did not bid an alternate number one, which was mandatory, uh, so that bid is also rejected. I don't know if there's anybody here from JG Drywall. Doesn't no. appear to be. No. Uh, so, given that history, while it is uh, <coughs> it is more money, it's the recommendation of the engineering department and myself that a contract be awarded to Riffalo Construction for three hundred ninety-one thousand five hundred dollars. <clears throat> which includes the base bid and alternate bid number one. <coughs> it's been moved and seconded. Any uh, questions or comments about this? Please call the roll. Adams? Yes. Solarier? Yes. Lambert? Yes. Mr. McGeehy? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. And at number uh, 19, public comment. Does anyone want to address the Township Committee? Uh, other than uh, Mrs. Larrier. <laughs> I'll invite you up at the end. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No public comment period. Uh, we received uh, information from the CFO about the bond anticipation note rollover, and now we're at administrative reports. Mr. Manning. Yes. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yes, Mayor. Uh, two items. One is uh, I was notified that, uh, not officially, but through another source, that the 31 loop bus, which I'm not sure where it loops, but uh, is going to be discontinued. At the Maplewood Loop. At the, at that, right. Which is next to Audi. Yes, but it goes somewhere else, and it loops there. That's the loop. That's the loop. All right. So the uh, 31 loop bus is going to be discontinued as of January the 2nd. Now, this. Uh, this happened about, I think it was four years ago, there was a threat and discontinuation of that line. Yes. And I'm not sure it, it, it didn't discontinue, so we have it, but it's back again, and we were never officially notified. We were never told. Anything. And I, I tried to contact the uh, people at uh, the only um, telephone number that I really had was their uh, line to uh for the lost and found and the garage so i called them and called them and there was nobody picked up the phone so maybe they started early on the discontinuation but i'm not sure so uh i would suggest that we pass a motion objecting to the discontinuation of the 31 bus the 31 bus uh is the bus that um, connects our north and south uh it runs along valley to the Millburn Loop, but it also runs to the hospital, uh, and it runs to Newark, and some of the um, down South Orange Avenue. So it goes to the and the Livingston Mall. So um, and it also goes to UMD and J and NJIT and that whole area there. So there's you know potential uh, harmful effects. So I would suggest to object to the discontinuation of Bus 31. I would so move that. Okay, you all moved it. How about you all seconded it? I seconded it. All right. So uh, please call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGeehy? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. Mr. Mayor, your second. Uh, second is that uh, we've received notice from the office, uh, the County Office of Emergency Management, that they are going to run a class uh, in March for the, uh, the Citizens Emergency Response Team, also known as CERT. We had a CERT uh, team before here, and it is really uh, defunct at the moment. And particularly, it fell apart because many of the people 
didn't feel they wanted to come out in the times of uh, floods or hurricanes or whatever it is and, and respond. So uh, I suggest that we try to reorganize it, reconstitute it, uh, going out specifically with the message that if you want to be trained and, and become a member of this, that you're expected to, and this is you know the type of work you will be doing if you have uh, to respond in emergency yes right, <laughs> right. and uh, so I, I think it was under the fire department i think it really should move under to the police department although the fire department should be involved in it all there's a lot of training that they do etc but I, I do believe that uh under the police department it might fare a little better so i just want uh some motion or approval to move forward with three trying to organize uh, this and, and get a class together for March. You were so, on the CERT team, weren't you? What was that? You were on the CERT team. Yes, I was definitely on the CERT team. Mr. Lemberg, we discussed this at public safety. Do you want to move uh, yes. a motion to? Yes, Mr. Mayor, as, as we discussed public <coughs> safety, I think it's this is worthwhile, and I think we should see what kind of interest is, is in the community and take advantage of this uh, opportunity uh, if we have interest. So I would move. Uh, that we uh, try to, to restart the CERT program and reach out to the public and let them know about this opportunity. And certainly, uh, if we are able to come up with a critical mass of, of volunteers, uh, that we restart this program. What would be the minimum? The what? I think we should have 12. We get a second to that? Second. Okay. Who's uh, call the roll on that motion? Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Larry? Yes, Mr. Lemberg. Yes. Mr. McGee. Yes. Mayor DeLuca. Yes, thank you. And that is the end of my report. Okay. And I had uh, yes. one thing, if you could check on this, and I mentioned it to you the other day. Um, I got a call from neighbors of the DPW yard about the leaf, the leaves that are there. Oh, you yeah, did. Right. Um, it's, it's getting high again. They don't seem to be taken out. Uh, I took a ride over there after getting the call, and they're pretty high. Uh, mounds of leaves, so you can check on that. Yes, I will do that tomorrow. Thank morning. you. Anything else? Anything else for Mr. Manning? Mr. Desiderio. Mayor, I know you uh, stopped Mr. Grodman, but uh, I'm going to take a moment oh. to uh, say goodbye to you. You're going to have a chance. Go ahead. You can do it. You'll have a chance. Well, I, I wanted to recognize uh, that it is the last uh, official meeting of Mrs. Larry or <laughs> and uh, I wanted to say it was an honor and a privilege to work with you and to serve uh, you in your capacity as Township Committee woman. And I think it's also interesting because I, I think we've, we formed a really good bond. And, you know, with the country at odds, as it is, over very specific items, uh, uh, same-sex marriage, etc., that two people who have very different views on things you know, could, you know, we should all be able to work together even though we disagree with other people because there's a lot of things that we all have in common that uh, make it. So I think that was a, a great experience for me to work with you, and I thank you very much. Mr. Desiderio. Yes, and I too wish you well, Mrs. Larrier. I, uh, as, uh, as someone who's in a profession where uh, we're speaking loudly and pounding on tables is kind of what uh, people do. Uh, you have uh, you have taught me that wisdom can be spoken softly uh, and articulately, and that you don't need to pound on tables. I thank you for everything that you've given to this town and to this committee, and I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you. Anything else? Anything from Mr. Desiderio? Ms. Fritzen? Okay, uh, just a couple things, Mayor. Uh, preparing for New Year's Day, which will begin at 12 noon sharp. And uh, we began uh, the parking permits for the parking permits, the uh, jitney permits, uh, the combos, the merchants, all uh, for 2018. And we even had a late night this past Friday until 8 o'clock where a lot of commuters could come right off the train uh, to the office and, and take care of that. We have a grace period until uh, roughly the 15th of January. So uh, you just have plenty of time to get your permit and uh, they're available now. My other item is, uh, I sent a copy of the letter received from the state ABC concerning 
five Highland Place. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but I would like to speak a little bit more with Mr. Desiderio. It appears that we need to uh, have uh, three resolutions. I highlighted them when I uh, sent it to you today. It doesn't seem like uh, it'll be a cumbersome thing, but I wanted to talk to uh, Mr. Desiderio about that. And I had that scheduled in my mind for the second meeting in January. I, I spoke to Mr. Montero, the attorney. Uh, he actually is going to be away that second meeting in January. It's his birthday. He's going away. But in any event, uh, the, 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 there was no particular urgency to it. He, the, they're going to, there's a process, so he's not overly concerned about it. Okay. And Mrs. Larrier, so uh, you and I both met and we figured it out 2005, both in the medical field, not the uh, government field. And uh, I want to say that, you know, we had that bond. I knew uh, Mrs. Larrier for several years before she came on the township committee. And uh, I also kind of give the stats out to retiring township committee people, just so that those that are left can, you know, think how they're suffering along. So if you do <laughs> six years on the uh, township committee, roughly, and I, and I do like, you know, hypothetical, it's about 30 meetings a year. Uh, and that certainly does include all your subcommittees, all of your liaison positions. It's roughly 30 with uh, regular township committee meetings and budget meetings and things like that. So that's about 180 meetings in this room alone. But you're on TV is the good part. Um, <laughs> roughly, you know, three to four hours of meeting, depending on, on you know, how, long? how much talking there is by people. Like the clerk. <laughs> so uh, you're, you're talking about, uh, you know, 600 hours or more in this room alone. And it's not that bad of a room. So, uh, what? It feels like a long time. I know. <laughs> um, so really, between our squad uh, stuff and township committee, and, and you've been really, really great with the staff, and we certainly appreciate that. You have a great bond with the clerk's office. Um, you are the only township committee person that ever ordered BLTs with double B. Double bacon? Double B. That's double bacon. That's <laughs> <laughs> and Mrs. Larrier, we always had our candy raids and cookie raids in. I'll miss that, so I have to get a new partner to run down to the vending machine. But again, I thank you uh, for all of your kindness you've shown myself and my staff. And we'll miss you. Mr. Thank Mayor, you. I do have a question for yes. Ms. Fritzen. Uh, Ms. Fritzen, will there be, uh, between now and January 15th, uh, are, are there any other late nights scheduled where we'll have someone uh, to do after hours uh, renewals or new? We don't have anything scheduled, but I think we have a lot of uh, options for people between uh, the mail, the drop-off boxes, both at Town Hall and at the station. And uh, we have late nights. Uh, we wait until after the second late night to uh, begin the actual enforcement. So I think there's plenty of opportunities. Well, you, you just said you, you, there, there will be other late nights? Well, we have late nights until 7 okay. on uh, the first and third Tuesday, and we do advertise that. Okay. But uh, we did hit a, a, a lot of people come in on that late night to late. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We have reports from elected officials, and then we'll uh, call up some speakers to talk about Mrs. Larrier. Uh, uh, Mr. McGee. <coughs> No report, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, However, first time this year. Yes, but um, I do want to. Merry Christmas. Yeah, happy holidays, everyone. No report. Um, I do want to recognize Ms. Lair, and I want to say it's been an honor and pleasure to serve with you. Uh, we've learned a lot talking to each other in private and public. Um, I hope that in the years to come, um, I'm able to fill the shoes of which you have presented in front of me. Uh, I am proud. I know you do. And you got some pillows. Everybody doesn't know I'm going to follow in her tradition. I've actually brought my pillows today. So in the tradition. <laughs> I say we buy new chairs. We will continue that tradition as well. Um, that's an insight. Not everybody knows. But um, 
thank you for your service. Thank you for being you, and thank you for all you did for Maple. Thank you. Um, Ms. Adams. Yes, Mayor, just a couple of things from Engineering Public Works, um, since I was not at the last meeting. Um, Paul Kittner, is our township engineer, has been working um, with the public utility companies such as PSE&G and New Jersey American Water. Um, we've had issues as every township, every municipality that I know of has issues with public utilities opening roads either without permits or without notice and so on and so forth. So Mr. Kidner has um, been focusing on improving that situation um, and hopefully right now it's better. Hopefully it'll stay better. Um, we had a presentation by Tracy Woods, the chair of the green team, um, and we had uh, invited her to our last meeting because we've been talking about public um, automobile charging stations or to locate them we are getting um, two which would take up two parking spaces and currently we're the engineering public works committee is um, preferring at the moment the a couple of spaces at the woodland for a lot of reasons including a power source and um, this would be hopefully a first step to try to get um, encourage green automobiles is, and um, give give people the option of being able to buy an electric car and and know that they could come to Maplewood Village and charge it while they shop or go to the movies or whatever. But um, also we have the arborist is supposed to come to our meeting this Thursday with a list of uh, trees in Maplewood. Um, that we are looking at, watching for the emerald ash borer. Um, the trees, uh, we asked him for a list of trees that he recommends removing now, recommends watching for the future, and recommends treating. Um, so that's also a budget consideration. Um, also, we've uh, been in contact with the Army Corps of Engineers regarding the failing wall along the river on the Greenway. Uh, the, the cordoned off part between Jefferson and Parker um, where the road is failing. We ask that the Army Corps of Engineers um, come along to fix that. They um, So our engineers in conversations with them at the moment. Um, and we will be uh, looking into changes at the intersection of Baker and Maplewood Avenue. Um, we have some redesign ide ideas for that to not only improve safety but traffic flow. Um, but nothing will be done before um, public meetings that we'll be scheduling in the early part of 2018. Um, those public hearings and me public meetings will be um, mostly for the input of residents, businesses, the Village Alliance, and property owners downtown. And lastly, um, I raised the issue of the timing of Springfield lights on Springfield Avenue. Once upon a time, way back when um, I was starting to make noise about Springfield Avenue and its its condition and, and it being ignored by none of the township committee members in this room, um, <laughs> but several back 25 years ago, um, because it was two, two lanes in each direction and rather uh, busy highway. Now we've, um, I fear it's gone to the opposite extreme where traffic backs up unnecessarily. And I'm worried that uh, traffic will be inclined to detour through College Hill and Hilton neighborhoods as a result. Um, so uh, we've asked the township engineer to look into, uh, talk with the county and look into the timing of lights along Springfield Avenue so we can find a happy medium of movement and also safety at the same time. So that's all I have to report, except I wrote um, Mrs. Larry a card, and I'm, I don't remember what I wrote in it because, <laughs> but so I'll just say that um, it, it's been a pleasure getting to know you over the last two years. Um, and I'll, I remember, and this isn't gonna make me sound good, but I remember, um, you telling me that you weren't sure you were going to like me when I started, <laughs> maybe because I I tend to use curse words sometimes, but I also I also uh, kind of just say what I think. So, um, but 
but uh, we've developed a, f a friendship and a, um, a camaraderie that I, I really appreciate. And I'm really going to miss you um, up here on this body. Um, and I wish you all the luck in the world going forward. Thank you. Mr. Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, other than to wish uh, all of our residents uh, a happy holiday, whichever holiday or holidays you're celebrating, uh, I hope they are happy and I hope they are healthy. Uh, and I hope that uh, in so many ways that 2018 uh, is a brighter year uh, than 2017 uh, has been uh, for, uh, for our, our state and our country. Uh, but uh, before we say goodbye to 2017, uh, it is our time for uh, bidding farewell to committee woman India Larrier as she returns to just being uh, Maplewoodian and, and citizen India Larrier. Um, and I, I think sort of like what Deputy Mayor Adams uh, just said, I think that I, India and I didn't expect to like each other. Uh, and I, I, I think I, I had actually heard from people, you two aren't going to get along. Um, and then we, we sat down one night at League of Municipalities two years ago. Uh, the, the mayor was there, uh, much though he might deny it. Um, and um, I know. In the code, breaking the code. And, and we. Uh, I'm not going to go into details. We, <laughs> we, uh, no, but we, we, we had a, we, we, we had a, a, a rather truthful conversation, uh, and, and I think came to the realization that even if we might not like what the other has to say, uh, we, you know, we can both take it, uh, and I think we've had uh, a really uh, honest relationship on the Township Committee. Uh, I think we found ourselves agreeing uh, on things uh, that maybe we didn't expect to. Uh, I know there are issues that you have uh, ended up bringing me to your side on that I, I didn't start out there and I didn't expect to get there, uh, but you won me over. And um, the Board of Health uh, is not going to be the same without you. Uh, you know the, the you know the the cats and dogs uh, are are still going to be out there, but we're 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 not going to have you to discuss them with. Uh, at least you know here on television, um, and uh, we you know we we know this is not goodbye. You're still going to be here. We're we're still going to see you. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, staying involved in official capacity. And and I know that if there's something that that we do that we shouldn't do or something that we're not doing that we should be doing, uh, that you'll be in our ear, whether it's in our email or over at that microphone letting us know. Uh, and, and I'll always be glad to hear what you have to say. Uh, and, and we'll miss you up here. So thank you, Mrs. Larrier, for your service. Thank you, Mr. Lembrick. I just want to make one announcement, and then I'm going to call up Ian Grodman, the uh, chair of the Maplewood Democratic Committee, to say some words. And then I'll circle back after the speakers to Mrs. Larrier. I just want to uh, let people know that we had a very productive meeting around Black History Month, looking to expand it uh, town-wide. Uh, there are, it's, it's just fascinating because most of these things have, have been occurring anyway, but by bringing everyone around one table and putting it together, uh, it is really uh, quite, a, it should be a quite exciting month. And I want to thank uh, Andrew Fishman and our Office of Cultural Affairs. He is going to take the lead on creating a website for all the activities in town. Um, and just so anyone who has an activity uh, if you could contact us by December 28th, we're getting someone to design the website. It will be focused on Black History Month, and we'll be launching it somewhere in the beginning of January, uh, the week of January 8th. But just to give you some examples of, uh, we're going to have Lori Mirabel, uh, who's an opera singer, do something at the library. Uh, there's going to be a kid's speak out at the library. There's going to be an art and music reception. 
Uh, we're working with the NAACP to do a, a screening of Egypt Uncovered. Um, talks about the kings uh, of, um, of Egypt and Africa's greatest uh, civilizations. And then we're going to end up the month um, with the story of Harlan Joseph, who was a uh, teenager in Trenton who was um, accidentally shot and killed by a Trenton police officer. Uh, the other activities that are going on is 1978 is having a featured artist, Dolores Stewart. The Interfaith Clergy Association is trying to bring in Reverend William Barber, who is uh, just famous uh, for all the work he did in North Carolina on uh, um, the Moral Mondays. Uh, the CCR is involved. Uh, so Much Justice was there. They're going to have a march. They're going to do a children's book club, and they're going to do a movie. Um, and then we've, uh, we've been working with cultural affairs to recruit an African-American theater group. Hopefully, we'll get them as a resident at the Bergdorf Center for the Performing Arts. And on February 16th, 17th, and 18th, they're going to perform for colored girls. Um, and it's going to be a weekend performance. And uh, I think they're also going to be looking for local talent. Um, so anyway, you'll hear more about that. But I just wanted to report on the meeting uh, going forward. Um. They're not going to be doing what they normally do. They're working with businesses, and both the Village Alliance, Springfield Avenue Partnership, and the Chamber of Commerce is on board to try to get businesses to do what they're doing. So there won't be the jazz, the jazz thing. This is going to be their work is going to be put into more townwide. Did you have anything to announce before we have other people talk about you? Yeah, report on? I have no. No report? OK. <laughs> then I'll ask Mr. Grodman to come up from the Maplewood Democratic Club. Uh, committee. Club. Committee. Club. Well, you were you, you, your club. You had the Grodman Club. It's not a club. It's a committee. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody. Ian Grodman, 43 Prospect Street. I'm here um, as an individual, but also in my capacity as the chair of the Maplewood Democratic Committee. Committee, excuse me. Club committee. Um, I want to thank India Larrier for her, her many years of dedicated service on the Township Committee. India and I first met shortly before she sought the nomination from the Democratic Committee all those years ago. And what impressed me about India then was the fact that India was a hardworking, dedicated, but most importantly, very thoughtful community volunteer. Um, she was not the type of person who sought the limelight. She was not the type of person who sought accolades. And from our initial meeting and meetings after that, I learned that that dedicated, thoughtful, hardworking person um, was doing a fantastic job on the township committee. She has always exhibited those qualities, and they've always impressed me and many of the people in Maplewood. At some point, we found out that we had some, some fundamental philosophical differences. Um, and that was difficult. Um, our friendship continued and our friendship improved after that point. And one of the things that I really learned about India was, despite the fact that she might have philosophical differences, we all do, um, India has always treated every single individual in this town with the dignity and the courtesy that we expect our elected officials to treat every person in this town. And I think that is what I and many of the people in Maplewood and many of the people in the Democratic Committee are going to miss most of all. So India Laria, thank you very much for your continued dedication, your hard work, your thoughtfulness, because that has been most important, I think, in the work that you have done here for the township. And we thank you for the dignity and the courtesy that you treat everybody with. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to uh, say anything? Mr. Ryan? You're not going to. You're not going to order that. Hairdo. You're going to order that double bacon. Anything, are you? Yeah. Had I known about the double bacon. I never knew you could do that either. See, <laughs> see, she kept it. From it. So Always the future. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Ryan, 431 end. Lennox Place. Um, I rise to speak um, as a, uh, a person who served for many years on the Township Committee uh, with Ms. Larrier, but uh, also uh, somebody who's um, known Ms. Larrier for quite a long time, uh, sort of outside the scope of, of, um, 
of being on the Township Committee and, and running for office. And so I wanted to say something about that. Uh, Indy and I uh, used to be neighbors. Uh, when Indy first moved to town, we lived just a couple of houses apart and uh, got to know each other at block parties and friends' Christmas parties and the occasional late evenings with too much wine and gossiping. And, and it was, uh, it was a, lovely, uh, a lovely thing. It was lovely to get to know her. Uh, I came to know that India was uh, not just a lovely, friendly person to have as a neighbor, uh, but a dedicated volunteer to the community that she'd moved into. She was very active in the first aid squad, and, and I was very, very impressed by that. Uh, and, and glad to have somebody on the first aid squad living just a couple houses away, I'm not going to lie. Um, though fortunately we never needed to take advantage of that, that skill. There was a point where um, an opening came up on the Township Committee and, and um, uh, Mr. Luke and I were chatting and I suggested India as a, a person who, who we might want to reach out to as, a, a, you know, as an active community volunteer who might be really good on the Township Committee. And we discussed it a little bit and I, I reached out to India and, and the rest was history. So I'd like to say at this point, India, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry I did that to you. I'm, I, I'm, I apologize to John and the kids. Um, I should have known better because, you know, I was on the Township Committee. I knew what the, the, the time was, and, and I did this to you, and I, and I, I apologize. Uh, but I don't apologize um, uh, to anybody else about that. I, I thought you were a, uh, a, a tremendous asset to the, to the Township Committee. It was great to have somebody who was an active volunteer on the committee, particularly somebody who uh, knew a lot about this very important issue of, of first aid and, and how... Uh, that was an important service in the community, um, and, and I thought it was a, a wonderful addition. Uh, I was very pleased to, to sit next to you. We had many uh, funny uh, conversations side by side when, when um, Ms. Larry sat in your seat, Mr. McGehee, I sat in hers, and um, I, I hope nobody has any of the notes that we passed back and forth at, at, at various times. Um, it, was a, uh, it was a pleasure to serve with you, uh, and uh, it was a pleasure to have you representing this town. Uh, I think you did it well, and I think we'll miss you, and I'm glad to, uh, that, that we're still friendly, even though it did this terrible thing to you. <laughs> and I hope to see you at the Christmas parties. Thanks. Captain Lemonthal, 36 Burroughs Way. Thank you, India. Thank you. I think back six years to when you came on, and I'm so happy that you were the woman that, that made it to women on the Township Committee. Serving with you uh, was a, a wonderful experience for all of the six years. What strikes me so much when I say six years is that it's, it's amazing that you were able to balance everything in your life. Um, and I, <coughs> excuse me, I know we all know f from each of our lives that you don't always feel like it's in balance, but you know, you're volunteering on the first aid squad when you were doing that when you first came on. You were raising three kids with John, and you know, it, simply drive, trying to drive kids around the same time you have a meeting or you know, uh, making sure John's there so you can get out. It, that's, that's a lot of juggling with children. And your parents, you, you were involved with them and the rest of your family, especially in times when your parents really were in crisis. Um, you're active in your church. You continue that the whole time. And your full-time work with Citizen Action, that was uh, more than full-time, really, when you put in all the uh, events that, that you needed to be at and the advocacy that you were doing. Uh, it, it all to me, shows the dedication that you've had as a public servant. Um, I think that comes from your being the strong woman that you are, the strong leader you are, and the strong colleague that you, you are to many of us right here now. Uh, you came in day one as president of the Board of Health and just kept going and doing it the right way for six years. And that's even with the cats. <laughs> you were still able to, to keep it going evenly and fairly. Um, 
there is no way Maplewood Loves Wellness would have been able to have such a, a strong start without the work that you did to make it happen. And you continue to be a, a strong advocate for housing, and uh, you even heard it tonight. It's uh, low and, and middle income housing have been on the forefront for you for, for all these years. Your beliefs have been very strong, and you've held to them even with criticism. And I would expect that, but it was there all the time. Um, it's, it's hard to see you leave this position, having served with you, and, and the value that you brought to our residents and to our businesses. But um, I, I think you're going to excel at your new job. I mean, you actually be became an AARP member while you were serving. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, they're the first ones to send you your card when you, to send you your birthday card when you turn fifty. So you, you'll see. You'll you'll see. Um, but. On a personal level, I want to thank you so much for the friendship that we've developed, and I look forward to it yeah, in our red wine drinks together. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else? So I just want to say a few things. Uh, because we ran together, and uh, whenever you started our conversations by saying, I'm sorry. I knew I was in for an earful. <laughs> because you used to apologize for dressing me down before you dressed me down. It was great. Um, I've, uh, I knew you before, I've known you for about 10 years and I've known knew you before the Township Committee, obviously with your work with the, um, Maplewood First Aid Squad, and your leadership there. A lot of people don't know that, but you were the president of the squad, and you uh, you kept it going when it was going through some tough times. And uh, you and Bruce were the the mainstay there, and that was that that will always be something that we know about you and, and respect about you. And your time here on the township committee has been really terrific. I think um, you have thought through issues, you've made informed decisions. Uh, you brought us um, the feral cat issue, uh, and, and you know, it, it, I know it's, a, it's we joke about it because talking about the cats, but you you led that whole effort when we were throwing our hands up and not knowing what to do, and we transitioned over to uh, St. Hubert's, and you really helped make all that happen. So we don't. I mean, we used to have people here every meeting talking about that issue. But now they have confidence that we've addressed it, and that's all because of you. So um, part of this job is when you serve, is when you look back and you say, did I get something done? And was it, was, are people's lives different now and for, the, for better, better now than when I started? And when you think about, those issues, the quality of life issues, and, and that has been consistently what you've worked on. And also, you have taken national issues and brought them here to the table. Your work with New Jersey Citizen Action on the Affordable Care Act was brought here. And your work with Bob Rowe to make sure that Maplewood residents would have access to uh, applying for the Affordable Care Act and getting help. It was very important because that that made a difference in people's lives and you, as said by uh, Ms. Leventhal you've been consistently advocating for affordable housing in all of our development projects and those are important and that's that's what we remember you as above all else that you made a difference in people's lives for the better and when you put your head on the pillow at night you need to know that you did a great job and you should feel very good about what you do. And I see John out there, and I, I know your kids, and they all should feel that about their wife, 
and about their mom, that they all should be very proud of what you do, because I'm proud. When, when Mr. Ryan and I went and met with you over at the Maple Leaf and said, are you interested? And you said, yeah, I am. And you brought your whole family with you. We were in the booth there. I knew then that all you wanted to do was to serve your community. You didn't want all this political stuff. You didn't care about titles or trappings of this, of being a township community person. You just wanted to come here and do your job and make a difference. So I want to thank you for that. Um, I do have a little thing for you here. Uh, do it public. I want you to open it because this is, uh, this is something that um, when, you, when you are in 2018, when you're home on a Tuesday night and you're thinking about you know, the township, yeah, on the first and third, and you, you put on your, your, uh, your jammies and you're watching us. You can put your feet up, particularly your bad foot, on the pillow, the maple leaf pillow. And, and when, we, when we veer off too much from, from what you believe in, the pillow will be good to scream into. <laughs> so it's both for comfort and for screaming. So enjoy it. And thank you very much for your time on the Maplewood Township Committee. By chance, do you want to say anything? Speak into I the mic, please. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> we took it off. Took it off. Well, guess what? I do have some stuff. Okay. Thank you so very much. Thank you. I'm going to read mine because I'm going to read it. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of six years on the township committee in service to Maplewood, I first want to thank the people of Maplewood for giving me the privilege and the honor. I know I sound like a broken record when I say I take seriously the need for ordinary people to step up in their communities and make them the best they can be. I thank the people of Maplewood and the Maplewood Democratic Committee for enabling me to practice what I preach. I thank my family and my husband who are, who's here for having the patience to let me do that. And I thank and I credit God for keeping me and for guiding me through the last six years. I have been blessed to be able to do this in a capacity that I would not have thought six years ago. I say blessed because I think it's a blessing to live here and work with and for the residents of this town. I say blessed because of the people who work here in this building and in other buildings, and they are dedicated and committed to our ideals and overall work for the same goals. Even as we on the TC come and go, it can't be easy adjusting to new TC members, but I found this staff, people supportive and encouraging even when we don't always agree. Liz, Sonia, Barbara, wherever you are, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for your patience and guidance and tireless efforts for Maplewood and for me. I thank my colleagues for the time that I have had to work with you, some longer than others, and the work that we did. Frank, Greg, Nancy, you've been passionate and committed to the best for the township. I believe we've worked well together to bring that about, and I know you will be great going forward. Nancy, I'm gonna pray for you <laughs> as the only woman on the township committee now. Thank you. Hang tough, <laughs> you can handle it. And I pass this short person's oh, thank stand. Thank God, mine's shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Th
as Kathy passed the shade. <laughs> pass it to you. And I will be praying for a swift and complete recovery for you. I am blessed to have had some great mentors. Kathy Leventhal, Gary Ryan, and thank you so much for being here. Arlen Brownlee, wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> know that I admire and thank you for your guidance and your friendship. Mayor Vic DeLuca, your wit, your crazy humor, your absolute passion for this town, your progressive standards, even when I don't always agree with them, have actually been invaluable to me. I will always admire you for your integrity. I agree with you or not. And that fire in your belly that propels you to work so hard, sometimes to your own detriment. Thing. The walking until I couldn't walk anymore. Challenging me to take ownership of my opinions and my decisions, even when you didn't agree with them. And mostly for your love and dedication to this township, unsurpassed. Maplewood is better, much better for your being its mayor. And I'm better for having worked with you. Indeed, I think I'm a different person as a result of that the last six years. Dean Daffis, congratulations. This is an opportunity to serve your community in a manner that not a lot of people in town get to do and I know you'll be great. I hope to be able to continue to work on behalf of the residents of Maplewood in other roles, because as I have said over and over again, a community is only as good as the people in it are willing to work to keep it so. That's my mantra, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I've been honored to do some of that work and be a small part of keeping Maplewood so. And Liz, it is a great group, and I will miss it. So to those who celebrate, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, and I would wish everyone here and in Maplewood at large a very prosperous, safe, and blessed New Year. With that, we will adjourn our meeting, our last meeting for 2017, and Mrs. Larrier will hit the gavel for us to close out the year. I declare us adjourned for the year, and we will see everyone on January 1st at 12 o'clock. Be here or be square. Yeah.
Testing. If you need Mr. versus first name, yes. don't forget who it is. Testing, testing. What? I'm going to go with the flow. Whatever. We'll see how it goes. I don't get this Okay. Yeah. Yep. Right, right, right. I right. Have oh. preferred yeah. <clears throat> Testing. Good evening, everybody. Um, I am not Mayor DeLuca. My name is Ian Grodman, and I'm here this evening. This is not a township committee meeting anymore, in case you're um, sitting here this evening or watching on TV. This is actually now um, a meeting of the Maplewood Democratic Committee, and let me explain why. Uh, the members of the township committee typically will have a caucus each year during which they will choose the mayor and the deputy mayor for the next year. That does not typically happen during a township committee meeting because um, sometimes there are delicate issues that are addressed in those meetings and so a caucus meeting is held. Anytime five members of the township committee get together, um, they are required by law to have a meeting in public. So traditionally, the Maplewood Democratic Committee, since a majority of the Maplewood Democratic Committee has been Democrats for at least the last close to 30 years, uh, the Democratic Committee has sponsored a caucus for the members of the Township Committee to get together and address who is going to be the mayor and who is going to be the deputy mayor for the following year. A caucus meeting is, by its very nature, a, a private or a closed meeting. Um, and until about 10 years ago, these meetings typically were held in closed session. 
most of the township committee met most of the township committees over the last 10 years have chosen to have this meeting in open and this year the members have chosen to have this meeting in open again and that's why we are here in town hall where everybody can see what's going on everybody can watch it on television if they like um, and the members of the township committee will address and vote for the mayor and the deputy mayor for the 2018 democratic committee so this is the um, I'm sorry, the Maplewood Township Committee. This is the Democratic Committee meeting. Um, and before we get to the business at hand, um, Mrs. A Ms. Adams has asked me if she can make a statement. And I'm going to turn it over to her at this point to make her statement. Thank you, Mr. Grubman. I just, I just wanted to say, as I stated early on in the Township Committee meeting this evening, um, my life turned a little bit upside down this early this fall. And um, have been focusing on uh, my health and will be continuing to focus on my health. The next probably six months or more will be, um, uh, I'll be less fast at running around, less, um, <laughs> less able to, or trying to keep myself from running around more than I should so that I can um, heal and get better. So I will not be accepting if there were going to be any nominations for me for deputy mayor or mayor um, for 2018 this evening. Thank you very much, Ms. Adams. Um, does anybody else care to address that or should we move forward with nominations for mayor? Okay. With that, I will invite nominations for mayor of the Maplewood Township Committee for 2018. Nominate uh, Mr. Greg Lembrick for mayor. Okay. Is there a second? We need, we need a second. Oh. I was going to nom nominate someone for. I, I, I'll, I'll second. Okay. All right. So. Um, uh, the, the motion has been made for Greg Lembrick to serve as mayor of the Maple Township Committee for 2018, and it's been seconded. Are there any other nominations for mayor of the Maple Township Committee for 2018? Mr. Graham and I nominate um, Victor DeLuca to serve as mayor for 2018. Okay, so the nomination of mayor. mayor um, the nomination of Victor DeLuca has been made to serve as mayor for the Township Committee for the year 2018. Um, we have two nominations at this point. Are there any discussions before we take a vote? Um, I'd like to make a statement, Mr. Robin. Please do. Uh, I guess I'm going to be the deciding vote here this evening. Uh, I, I want to thank you, Mr. Grodman. Uh, I want to thank the, the Maplewood Democratic Committee for its support in getting me here today. I'm deeply grateful uh, for uh, all of your efforts in particular and our vice chair's efforts, if she's still here. Garnett Hall. Thank you, Garnett. Um, I'm deeply grateful uh, to uh, my new colleagues up here on the bench. I look forward to working with all of you, and thank you for your support and getting me here today as well. And obviously to the voters of Maplewood. I would not be here without you, and I promise that uh, I will serve with your best interests in mind every single day of my service. Um, before I get to my nomination for mayor, I, I think it's necessary to give a little context in history. I know we've, we've had a long night, but I think it's important. Uh, I was surprised by how many voters I met out on the campaign trail earlier this year who really had no idea about our government body's structure. We're a township committee comprised of five members. Uh, who were voted in to serve a term of three years. Each person is. The terms are staggered so that every year uh, we have the opportunity for a new person to raise their hand and serve, be elected and serve, uh, and or obviously to reappoint someone for another term. Currently, our bylaws don't call for any term limits. Um, and so after elections uh, after after an election every year we get to this point where we have this caucus a caucus is supposed to be a discussion um, and uh, typically as mr. Grodman stated uh, one in private 
and for good reason, not because we're hiding anything, but this is a partisan process. Uh, it is a political process, and the idea is to uh, give people the space to be frank, open, transparent, uh, and to have a real discussion about this important personnel decision. The governing body does uh, discusses personnel matters in closed session, and uh, many of us at work uh, know how personnel matters are dealt with there too, also privately. But here we are. So I want to be as transparent as possible uh, about my deliberations and my resulting nominations this evening. Uh, I have to say, I've been uh, really wrestling and thinking about this uh, most thoughtfully uh, up until a couple hours earlier today. Uh, this is my first public act. And I want it to. Uh, I want to do the right thing. I want to do the right thing by the committee. I want to do the right thing, most importantly, for Maplewood in the best interests of the community. So the idea behind this caucus and our forthcoming reorganization is that we get to decide who is going to chair us going forward as the mayor and vice chair us as the deputy mayor. And we get to reappoint and consider who's going to serve on committees and boards that do the business of the township. So by its very definition, the idea is to rotate the roles and the seats and to give people the opportunity to step up into leadership. Um, we haven't seen a lot of change or rotation in, in those seats, in those roles in recent history, but change has begun. Uh, change began with the election uh, of Mr. Lembrick last year with Mr. McGeehee, and I'm certainly a product of that change. Um, I advocated very strongly in part for change during my campaign. I do believe uh, that change is necessary in leadership, not, for ch not change for change's sake, but for the purpose of getting fresh new voices and perspective, uh, looking at matters in a different way we may have not done so before, and also importantly, to reflect the change in the community we're elected to serve. So, Looking forward to 2018, we're going to see a lot of change. It's going to be a watershed moment for our community. Fundamental changes, the likes of which we hadn't anticipated uh, earlier this year, frankly. Uh, one of the uh, most important components of every town or city is its public safety. As many of you know, we are already undergoing uh, a very important process, a comprehensive process in rebooting our police department to create a new progressive culture, uh, one that will reflect real community policing and improve our relationships in the community and make us all in turn feel safer, officers and citizens alike. Uh, we're also working towards a merger of our fire departments, ours in South Oranges, which, is, which would be a major shared services milestone to merge a civil service and non-civil service department in this way will produce significant cost savings to taxpayers in Maplewood at a time where we all could use a little economic relief. Um, and without sacrificing any essential services in terms of fire protection and EMT services. Up until a couple of weeks ago, uh, we didn't even know that we were going to be looking for a new town administrator. Again, for people out there who are watching the video or will be soon, the town administrator role is clearly, uh, in my opinion anyway, the most important role in the town. The township administrator is the CEO of the town. He or she administers every function, supervises, every part of the town, including this governing body, to make sure that things are running smoothly at all times. It's a major fundamental change and, and one that was uh, certainly unforeseen, I think, to all of us up here earlier this year. And of course, 
we're getting a new governor and a new administration under him that promises to be truly, for the first time in decades, a progressive administration. We have the opportunity using our relationships with the incoming administration to really fight for our long overdue state aid and school funding as we contemplate town resources and look to uh, school infrastructure improvements, which is a big deal we're gonna be looking for, uh, working towards in 2018, uh, as well as trying to get state grants for our library project. So a lot of exciting change indeed. Uh, it's no secret since uh, there's been a lot of talk and speculation and gossip about who I'm going to nominate for mayor out there in the community already that I've had uh, conversations about this earlier this year with Mr. Lembrick and assured him at the time that I was in his camp. Um, again, going to seeing new leadership, which is an important thing. Um, I've had conversations with Mayor DeLuca as well uh, during that time, uh, before that time, since that time. Uh, it's also no secret that because of my conversations with Mr. Lembrick, um, you know, it made some for some awkward moments between me and the mayor uh, during our campaigning out there together as 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 running mates uh, this election season. I've spoken to voters throughout Maplewood how they feel about this. We are again serving them. We are not elected to serve our egos and our titles, and we've kind of lost track of that uh, as the drum roll leads to this point every year and the speculation and the gossip um and i've had conversations about this believe it or not uh beyond our legislative team our state reps uh at the county and state level and outside of maple outside of new jersey people who used to live here because that's how far this has gone it saddens me that whatever conversations were had earlier in the year as I was deliberating about this, went outside of the private uh, moment that I shared with a particular individual because uh, it was disrespectful, I think, to current leadership to do so and highly disrespectful to the deliberative uh, actions of this body. So I have considered all of that and thought to myself, like I said, over and over again, wrestling back and forth, what is the right choice? Who is the right choice, rather, in the best interest of the community to get us through the major big ticket items, to get them off the ground in 2018, to work with our incoming administration, uh, the governor's administration, um, and to best serve the challenging issues that we're facing here locally and to leverage our relationships outside of Maplewood for our local benefit. Decision tonight, literally just a few hours ago, uh, and I've never been more nervous in my life, and I've appeared in federal court as a former litigator, um, and I've appeared in criminal court, and I've also, um, you know, appeared in appeals court in Second Circuit in New York. So, so I'm used to speaking in public, but again, I'm, I'm saying all this not to make myself look better, but rather to express how seriously I've taken this decision in the best interest of the community. Um, I'm going to throw my support towards Mayor DeLuca for possibly one final uh, year as mayor. Uh, I want to say that I think Mr. DeLuca is best suited to mentor and develop our next leader. And I think he recognizes that. I think we've had some communications during our campaigning together where um, Vic DeLuca appreciates the need for change, for passing the baton, for stepping back a little bit and letting someone else have the opportunity. But for this year going forward, I think we need his leadership, we need his guidance, and um, I think 
we could use him, and I hope that he will uh, collaborate with the next leader going forward. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Adams. Ms. Adams. I agree with uh, much of what um, Dean said and, and appreciate his candor and his thoughtfulness. I know it was a, a tough decision. I just have a little exception with being excluded as one of the new people who came on to the township committee. Oh, sorry. I know I've been here, and, and to the three newbies, um, I know I've been here a long time because I've lived here a long time, um, and I've immediately, in, upon moving here in 89, got involved in the community to a large extent. So while I've been involved in the community a lot, most of that as volunteer and just activist in get, making change, um, I've only been on the township committee as long as he has. <laughs> and thank you for, for adding those comments. Actually, if you, if you look at my notes after you see, uh, you were in here, okay. it's but okay. I forgot, I just, I just, and I was trying record. to go as quickly as possible because I know we all want to go I home. know I'm going to have to stand up for myself in the year going forward, no. so I'm just starting now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your service, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. Are there, uh, does anybody want to make any other comments? Before? Yeah, I'd like to make a statement, actually. Um, in the past few weeks, I've been disappointed by some of the events regarding this process. I do not respond to threats. I will not take being threatened by anyone at any elected level, municipal, district, county, or state level, or their staff. I find it very disappointing if others outside of the TC attempt to influence this process. We all serve at the pleasure of the residents of Maplewood. And when we lose that compass because we are more focused on the title than the work of the people, then we have lost our way. Living in our town for 40 years or four years does not entitle anyone, nor does a longer tenure define earning the right to be a member of the TC in any capacity. We have to earn this honor every single day in our actions and our efforts. In addition, we must carry ourselves as leaders in all public activity and actions. As leaders, we must work to build relationships with our residents, firefighters, police officers, and town employees. We are a strong township committee. Personally, it is an honor to serve the residents of Maplewood. Although all residents may not agree with the opinions, decisions, and votes that I have made, I am here to lead and make decisions that are in the best interest of the greater community. While I one day hope to serve with all of my colleagues here in their capacity of mayor, I again want to state that regardless of our tenure, our efforts, and our energy toward this town is what makes us a strong township committee. Thank you. Mr. Grodman? Yes. Um, I would like to just express my uh, uh, complete shock uh, and uh, genuine disappointment in some of what's been said tonight. And I'm not going to say any further out of respect for this township committee and this township, but uh, I'm uh, I'm, I'm surprised at some of what's been said tonight. Uh, with that, since there are uh, two individuals who've been nominated, I'm, I'm just going to go across the dais um, and ask each person to, to let me know who their, their vote is for. So I'll start with the far end, Mr. Lembrick. Uh, Mr. Grom, and my vote is for myself. Thank you. Adams? Um, my vote is for Mr. Duluka. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Daffis? Uh, Duluka. And Rick? So we have three votes for Victor Luca, two votes for Greg Lemberg. Victor Luca will serve as the mayor of the Maple Township Committee for the year 2018. All right. With that, we'll call for nominations for Deputy Mayor. I have one. I'd like to nominate 
Uh, Frank McGeehy for Deputy Mayor. Do a second? I second. Thank you. Are there any other nominations for Deputy Mayor for the Maplewood Township Committee for 2018? I'd like to nominate Mr. Greg Limprick for Deputy Mayor. Is there a second? I, I'd like to decline the nomination. I would have seconded Mr. McGeehy's nomination. Okay, so you're declining the nomination? Yes. All right, thank you, Mr. Lemberg. Anybody else? Okay, with that, I'm gonna go across again, even though there's one person who's been nominated for the position. Uh, Mr. Lemberg? Uh, Mr. McGeehy. Thank you. Ms. Adams? Mr. McGeehy. Thank you. Mr. DeLuca? Thank you. Mr. McGeehy. Thank you. So we have a five to zero vote. Frank McGee, he will serve as the deputy mayor of the Maplewood Township Committee for the year 2018. With that being said, I believe that my business as the chair of the Maplewood Democratic Committee is over for this evening, unless anybody up here uh, would like to address anything else. All right, well, thank you all very much. I call this meeting of the Maplewood Democratic Committee adjourned. Thank you.